So the guys over at CNH Precision have been around for about 10 years. The last six years, they've been spending a lot of their time working on modifying handguns to accept a lot of the current red dot optics that are out in the community. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. There are two general categories, red dot optics that are mounted on handguns seem to be falling into nowadays. One is more of a rail grabber version. And that rail grabber version is primarily for close emitter style of optics. An example of that would be a Aimpoint Acro or a uh, Hollow Sun 509T, just as a couple examples. The next version is what most of us are familiar with, and that's more of a uh, RMR style or RMR footprint. And we know that there are some other optics that interface on that particular footprint, hollow sun being one of those as well. So you kind of have two options. Are you running more of an open emitter or are you running a closed emitter? It really doesn't matter which version you're running. What, what it really comes down to is who are you gonna let cut on your gun? And what I like is companies where you box up the slide, box up the optic, and you send it to them. That way they can do more of a precision fit perfectly your slide to that particular optic. Things happen. Sometimes there's a little bit of oversizing or dimension change or whatnot. But one of the things that I really like is when that, when that optic comes back, it's mounted on there perfectly. And that's what you want to look for uh, in a good, reputable company. I want to make sure it's straight. I don't want that thing crooked on my slide either. A couple of the other things that you can do is you can either request and mount the optic directly to the rear of the slide or and do away with the rear sight, or you can actually have a rear sight mounted forward of the optic or a rear sight mounted uh, at the back, more traditional. Those are gonna be some other choices that you're gonna to have to think about as well. Not only do they work on Glocks, but they also work on 1911s and 2011s. They make what's known as the cross cut plate. And this is pretty cool because what it does is it allows the end user to, if you wanna run a closed emitter optic on your 1911, you can. And then if all of a sudden you decide you want to run an open style emitter, so more of a, maybe you're running a Hollow Sun 508T uh, version, you can throw that on as well. It has a built-in rear sight, so you have a rear sight already built into the plate, and then as you are changing optics, you would be changing plates as well. So just something else to consider, if you do have a 1911, you can turn it into a red dot gun. So thanks to Joe Savio for sending me a few of these hollow suns. Just in case you don't know what the difference is because you're new in the shooting community, that's okay. This is a closed emitter. This is the 509T version right here. And as you can see, there's glass in the back, glass in the front, and the emitters in the center. So this is a closed emitter on this particular one. And you can see just a workmanship that the guys have done, the way it goes on. These are night fission sights. I really like these. These are mine that I've developed. This hangs flush to the back. They also make another version as well. Um, both are tritium along with a, um, it's like a PVC, polymer PVC coating, which is uh, extremely vibrant and they really go nice together. When you bring the gun up, I can just barely see the edge of the front sight. And for me, that's all I really wanna see. I don't wanna see much more. So I'm not really into the suppressor height sights because with the durability of these optics nowadays, I find that I'm not using them. And if I'm not using them, I don't want it taking up that much window. The battery life on these optics are phenomenal. Uh, they range from 50,000 hours on some of the versions all the way to 100 to 200,000 on some of the other versions. The next version is what most people are familiar with, and that's more of an RMR style of footprint. One of the ways you know that is the screws right here are mounted 
from the top into the slide. So the other version that you saw is more of a rail grabber that's screwing into the side of the slide. This is coming from the top down. When we look at an open emitter, what we're looking at for simplicity is a little movie projector is right here and it throws um, a beam of light, so to speak, on the window. And that's where you see that dot. So if you start getting a lot of um, debris piled up on the backside, it can be a little bit problematic. Doesn't mean you're out of the fight. It just means that once this optic starts getting covered, it's not as simple as just wiping the back of a lens really quickly that we're used to on other style of optics. We got to kind of get in there and clean that out a little bit. Um, so can be some different things. Mainly what we worry about is not necessarily the window, but the emitter not being able to project. That's more of the issue that we run into with a um, open emitter. I think what you're gonna see over time is most of the red dots are gonna graduate to closed uh, emitters. That way, if anything happens, it's easier to just wipe the lens in the back and the front if you need to, and you're probably gonna be okay. Whereas if this thing gets fouled for some reason, you're gonna be in a little bit more of a predicament. Doesn't mean you can't fight, you'll still be able to do other things. Uh, sights on this, a little bit different, but they are still from the company Night Fission. Runs a tritium bar in the rear, and then of course a uh, tritium in the front. And on this, because it's an RMR style uh, footprint, the sights protrude up just a little bit more than what they do on the uh, closed emitter version. Again, I like to keep the sights nice and clean uh, in regards to the red dot optic. I don't want a bunch of busyness in that window. I want what I'm looking at to sight in with, I want it to be as clean as possible. So that's why I choose these. There's a lot of different ones that are out on the market. They even make uh, suppressor height sights as well. You can see just the way it's cut, the workmanship, and this was a slide that was already cut before. So it already had some cuts in it by the manufacturer prior to um, CNH Precision getting a hold of it. Having somebody that you can trust to wrench on your gun is extremely important. Uh, for me, when I sent them this 10 millimeter C, uh, thanks for Fairlito, I appreciate it, John. Um, when I sent this off to them, this was kind of a big deal gun for me, and the reason why is it's a 10 millimeter compact. It's also ported, which I really like, so I can shoot it pretty quick. Gives me an advantage. I like carrying it up in the mountains because I've got 10 rounds of 10 millimeter uh, plus one in the chamber. And then I also have a backup magazine of 15. Now that I've got a red dot on it, my capability just went up in regards to being able to hit even better with it at distance. So <clears throat> I think that Anybody that's looking at having a, a red dot installed on their gun because yours didn't come with a plate on it at all, I don't think you can go wrong with CNH Precision.